Good evening. This is CTV News for Tuesday, April 21st. I'm Gina Barti. And I'm Byron Scott. Thank you for joining us tonight. Well, the Maryland State Education Association and elected officials gather in Annapolis to send them a message to Governor Larry Hogan. They're calling on the governor to release $68 million in education funding that was allocated by the General Assembly. The teachers union says without the $68 million, 1,200 teaching jobs statewide could be in jeopardy. Class sizes could also increase and education would the suffer. Session. We have funded the money. We've made it available. We're hopeful that Governor Hogan is going to release that money. He can't use that money for anything else in the budget. It would only refer back to the general fund. So that money is there to be had by, for the education of our children. Make no mistake, this is an historic decision that is about to be made. I do not think our governor wants to make the wrong decision because it not only interrupts a consensus about education, but it will return us to the days we don't, we don't want to go back to when you had us divided about how we are to educate our children. Officials say the cuts could cost Prince George's and Montgomery counties millions of dollars in funding. Members of the MGM Corporation were in Upper Marble today to give council members an update on the community benefits agreement. CTV Sonia Shovasva has more. Well, county council members here in Upper Marlboro are getting to hear from both sides. They are hearing from MGM and they are also hearing from some minority contractors here in the county who say that they are not getting a fair share of the pie when it comes to this $1.2 billion project. Now, MGM tells us that they feel that they have been doing all they can to engage these contractors and today they presented a report to the council. What I wanted to do today was to introduce you to a few of the Prince George's County MBE contractors who we've given significant contracts and I'd appreciate it if they could stand. Now, their names are on the screen, but I'd appreciate it if you could stand. But I wanted, in, in case you have any questions of these, of these contractors, uh, I wanted to, I asked them to come today and they were grac gracious enough to do it. So been in several community meetings, but we've actually been told, uh, and quote unquote, we don't have to do business with African American contractors, and we think that's disingenuous. The first report again was filed the other day, and I'm happy to tell you that MGM exceeded the CBA goals for local and business participation in two categories. The goal was 30%, we hit 31%. On county-based minority business enterprise participation. I, we really think that what's happening is that the African-American business person is being discriminated against. They're saying $20 million, $25 million. It sounds good to the public, but this is a $1.2 billion project. And if it's a $1.2 billion project by their own community uh, benefit agreement, we should be getting $300 million. We ran into some environmental issues on the land and we had to mitigate those environmental issues. And no MBEs in that space. So there were a few exclusions that were allowed under the CBA. Now we're told that the MGM project is slated to be completed in the fall of 2016. In Upper Marlboro, I'm Sonia Shavasva. Back to you guys in the studio. Once completed, MGM National Harbor will employ close to 4,000 people. Meantime, the Prince George's Council votes unanimously to ban the use of coal tar. The sealant is mainly used in driveways and parking lots. Environmentalists say the product is, damaged, is damaging to aquatic life because the runoff enters our waterways. Children should be exposed to concentrations of PAHs at anywhere near the levels found in coal tar pavement products. Our parking lots and driveways where they play hopscotch, jump rope, roll on big wheels, learn to ride bikes should not be coated with these products. It's unclear when the ban will go into full effect. Many questions, few answers, and a lot of anger in Baltimore tonight as investigators try to determine how a 25-year-old black man died from injuries he suffered while in police custody. Freddie Gray died on Sunday, a week after his arrest due to a severe uh, spinal cord injury. Now, six police officers who played a role in the incident have been suspended with pay. Police say they used no force while making the arrest and so far have not said why they detained him. As to how his spinal cord was injured, that remains a mystery as well. Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blakes indicates that they'll get to the bottom of what happened. 
And a trial of a Prince George's County police officer accused of misconduct in office will start tomorrow. Surveillance video captured Officer Jerry Thomas as he struck and shoved the juvenile who was in handcuffs. This incident happening back in November of 2012. The teen could be heard screaming and making other noises. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Gina Barti. And I'm Byron Scott.